everyone, welcome to Collaboratory, the show where Mike Morris improvises an animatic with a little help from our audience. And we learn about the craft of storyboarding along the way. This is an improv art stream that runs on audience suggestions. Mike, what kind of prompts are we looking for from the audience? Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, <clears throat> we are looking for three things. We are looking for characters, setting, and conflict. Generally, we do about two characters, but uh, if you have a conflict that only requires one, that's great. Just probably not a lot of crowds. <laughs> cool. So feel free to jump in with your suggestions and whatever you type might show up on screen. I can go ahead and start with the, the first question. So Mike, what does a no, typical- I think, I think before we go into that though, I think you should introduce yourself because our audience doesn't know who you are yet. Hi, hello. My name is Nikki Goldberg. I'm an, uh, I'm a storyboard artist and a character designer in Burbank, California. Um. And, and you know, uh, you know, oddly enough, our theme for the month for Toon Boom is character design. So, um, you know, instead of you asking me questions, I'm going to flip the script on you a little bit and ask you a couple of questions. Oh, because, no, no. Because, like, you know, uh, I'm in boards. I, I do... <laughs> minimal design work just enough to get by on boards right because mm -hmm. you know honestly let's let's you know be clear about this is a lot of times you know when we have a board we have characters that come up that aren't necessarily already pre-designed for us right and so we have to come up with stuff on the fly um you know and then sometimes those board designs get passed on to a character designer mm -hmm. and then so so how do you take those things and reconcile them like you're obviously working with like a dual dual brain system set up here with storyboards on one side and characters on the other side. So like, how do you, how do you approach starting a character design? So I think it is interesting coming from both storyboarding and character design. Um, one of the things that I think a lot of character designers may or may not think about is shorthand in storyboards. And that's one thing that when I'm doing storyboards, I'm like, Oh my God, I designed this, like I might design something for a personal storyboard that's like a beautiful princess or whatever, and she's got a thousand details. But then when you go to storyboard, you're like, oh, why oh, did crap, I? Oh crap! I gotta draw this multiple times. And then the animators would be like, why did you do? Why did you do this to us? And so yeah. um, I think I've got that uh, maybe unique perspective. I know there's a lot of people who dabble in both character design and yeah. a storyboard, but um, I do have that in my mind. So I do think for character designers, that's a good thing to think about. Is yeah, I mean, is economy is going to be a thing no matter what. Even in like yeah. high-end CG productions, I feel like economy is still a thing. Yeah, exactly. Like, um, you know, in, in, in some of uh, the situations, like, you know, going back to the princess with all the, you know, dripping with dangly bits, uh, like, you know, jewelry and stuff that's hanging and moving. Like um, even all that, even if you apply a lot of like physics and stuff to it, there's still that element of animation that you have to kind of go through. But uh, let me know when we have some some uh, audience suggestions rolling in and we can, we can get something on this here storyboard. Um, so I wanted to, right, while we're waiting for audience suggestions, I was gonna ask you like, what are some okay. of the mistakes you might notice? Like I know there's, Right, people fresh out of school, or there's people who are looking to become storyboard artists. So, mm -hmm. what are some of the mistakes you might notice with first time storyboard artists, either um, field or starting to learn? Gosh, you know what? I think the biggest thing that I run into is just uh, clarity issues. Mm -hmm. yep. You know, like people that have this idea in their mind that they're not quite how to, to relate it, you mm -hmm. know, because like at, at the end of the day, when, when we talk about storyboarding, I mean, communication, right? Yeah. Because, you know, we're, we're taking an idea in, uh, you know, I have a little smiley man right here. He's got an idea that is, you know, X, Y, and Z. And mm -hmm. then he has to turn and tell somebody, you know, And he has to basically, you know, show them. Oh, look, I know the last three letters of the alphabet. X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. But like, you know, the other the other person could be looking at that. And let's just do like a, a quick panel here. 
Mm -hmm. They're confused. They're going, what? Actually, we're doing this digitally. We don't have to draw it again. We just copy and paste it. So one, of the, one of the economical things you can do in store boards. And then we would go to like something like this where we see an over-the-shoulder shot of this person pointing, right? Mm -hmm. And then this person is surprised. And they look down and maybe it wasn't the clearest thing they ever came up with. You know. I like how you also flip the letters. I was like, yeah. oh. Didn't, didn't quite uh, communicate it as clearly <laughs> as they thought. <laughs> and, and it's hard because like, you know, obviously people can't read your mind, right? Unless you're some sort of military experiment um but uh it, just taking that idea and and distilling it into a way that somebody else is going to be able to understand right so mm -hmm. if if we were telepathic creatures that could just beam ideas from one brain to another it would be so clear but we can't and so we have to use things like words we have to use things like pictures we have to use things yeah. like you know uh like video to to relay our ideas and so those ideas have to be able to communicate clearly what we're looking for. And I think a lot of that time that clarity can get lost and just like, I have this idea in my head, but I'm not quite sure exactly how to put it down, but I'm going to do my best. Yeah. You know, and that's something we talk about on the show quite frequently is just this idea of clarity in, uh, in drawings, you know, let's, let's just do a little bit more here where we've got him, you know, yeah, right what, what are some things we might do to help with the clarity? Or if there's anything, maybe it's easier to say, what are some things you know kind of bog up or, or, or clog clarity? So. I, I think one of the things that you can do to improve your communication is improve your sense of composition. Mm -hmm. Right? Where we have things like communicating more directly. I think that happens uh, or, or can happen and should happen a little bit more. Like studying composition, studying cinematography, those two things uh, really will help you be able to, to distill your ideas down a little bit more into something that someone else can, can understand a little bit more easily, you know? Because, um, and, and knowing sort of a little bit of the psychology behind different shots, like when to use a close-up, when to use a wide shot, when to use a medium yeah. shot, you know, when, when to have two characters just juxtaposed in certain ways. Um, and honestly, a lot of that just comes with uh, experience. It comes with uh, just doing it, you know, because. Yeah, film too. Like if you study you, film, you're going to, odds are it's going to help you with your animation. Odds are. Yeah. And you should. I mean, if, if that's something you're very serious about doing, then then definitely, uh, you know, practice. Make, hone, your, hone your craft, as they say. Yeah. So we do have some suggestions from the audience. Do um, we? Excellent. So we have, can we do a Halloween theme as a setting? Maybe draw something like a haunted swimming pool. Um, maybe the conflict is something like a, a tense standoff. Um, <laughs> You guys. Haunted swimming pool. That sounds awesome. Okay, so haunted swimming pool. I like that. Let's just, okay, uh, yeah. you know what? We're going to just turn that off, and I'm going to go straight to a background drawing. Yeah. All right. I and think two ghosts, haunted house, and who has the best scary face, but they can't see their faces in the mirror. So I don't know if that's um, we can do a mix of the two or kind of pick and choose from that. But um, thank you so much for the suggestions. Yeah, very very cool suggestions. I really like the haunted swimming pool. Um, <laughs> I think that we might want to think about some characters that relate to Haunted Swimming Pool. Um, yeah. And I'm just going to draw some quick, um, you know, uh, sort of 
ground plane lines, mm -hmm. just so we can kind of see a little bit about um, what our perspective is here. I mean, I'm kind of leaning toward like a pool guy having to clean a haunted swimming pool. You know, this reminds me of like one of those like swimming pools in Hollywood or something like that. One of those like old yeah. hotels, you know, like the uh, the Roosevelt. They say that like uh, what's it? Uh, Marilyn clean. Monroe's ghost haunts the poolside area. <laughs> awesome. That's, that's the the urban legend because uh, I guess that's where she died or something, and then. Oh, uh, I didn't know that. Oh my god. Yeah, so like they say that her ghost haunts the pool there. Too spooky. Um we do have suggestions for like if you wanted to add a ghost. Um but I could make a few suggestions too. We could do like something like zombies. Maybe the pool cleaning guy is a zombie and his arm keeps falling in the pool or something. <laughs> or a mummy. Well, we need, if we're going to do horror, we have to have a subject mm -hmm. of said horror. So, yeah. um Let's see. Uh, let's go. What what do we have for for suggestions again? We have uh, somebody talking about ghosts, right? We do. We have somebody talking about. Um, so we had the pool idea, and then someone else suggested there's two ghosts, uh, and they're trying to make the best scary face, and they can't see their faces in the mirror. Um, but if you want to, go you know what? Like, that might be kind of interesting to have them be poolside, and yeah. uh, just have them be like talking about their scary faces. And then uh, maybe the maybe the pool guy like shows up and they practice on him. <laughs> that sounds so cute. <laughs> that might be kind of funny. It's like like the the dead ghosts of of two starlets yeah. from like the 1940s or something like that. <laughs> oh, and then there's like maybe a witch judging who has the scariest face. Uh, I think it's just them pulling faces. I don't think we need to involve a judge. Because uh, I mean, you know, they're they're uh yeah just chilling right now all right and we'll, we'll make this we'll make this pretty uh pretty simplistic i think so um i think one of the things we should probably do here is just establish a little bit more of an environment um i think we might even be able to take this a bit bigger mm -hmm and make something of a bit more of a sweeping um, edifice here. So we would have like a hotel pool. Um, let's let's push the this perspective just back a little ways. So we can have a little bit more lounging room here. And let's push that back over here. And let's just one of the great things about working in vector, you know, is that you can you can really mess around with stuff as you need to. And if you never have used um, the perspective tool, it's pretty handy. I, I like to use um, like the lattice one because i feel like i have a little bit more control over it but um yeah there's two settings there's lattice and perspective because perspective will will definitely point it in you know directions that mm -hmm. um will we'll give it that really hardcore perspective look yeah it's so, another great go. thing about digital too is you can just change that or if you draw right if you do a ground plane on paper you're like well i guess i could tilt the paper but you know yeah so let's put in like you know a little cabana area right here it's you know oh, and of... i had a question for you mike um so yeah. asked um she, it's like oh i know this is a simple question but every time i draw or sketch uh, my pen pressure is not very visible um maybe a little visible what would you, be your recommendation for me to draw my sketch of my character? Um, I would say if you're if you're dealing with a hardware issue like pen pressure, I would look at your pen settings. Um, I know that that the Wacom stuff has um, uh, like an editor, uh, well, like a preferences manager kind of, mm -hmm. and you can go into that and see what your pressure, uh, pen pressure is at. Inside Storyboard Pro, there's also a thing uh, uh, related to the stabilizer where you can set your pen pressure in there as well. 
So um, the other suggestion is bigger brush, maybe. Um, yeah. So with without knowing the specifics of your machine, it's it would be hard to to give a definitive answer. Mm -hmm. Might also be something along the lines of, you know, what kind of Cintiq you're using, or if you're using a different tablet. I know some tend to be more, you know, have an emphasis on, yes, ours has, you know, pressure sensitivity and what have you. So, and certain pins too, certain strokes are like, oh, this is going to be a, a varied line or it's going to have tapered lines. So. Yeah. So, so without, without having seen your particular model of computer yeah. and your hardware setup, it's a little bit more difficult to diagnose. Mm -hmm. Good question. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to take these two windows, and, and since we're doing this fast, we're going to just start doubling them up. Double it up. And double it up again. Boom, boom. So when I thought of this place, are you thinking this is more of like an like a fancy Hollywood inside pool, or is this kind of uh, like outdoor. outdoor? Outdoor pool. Okay. Very cool. Outdoor pool. No, no vampires. No vampires here at this pool. <laughs> um, no, they, they're too sparkly. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, Hollywood has those kind of vampires, the, the exactly. Twilight. Exactly, glitz and glamour. The Twilight kind, they are too busy contacting their agents. Mm -hmm. to actually More partial to werewolves, anyways. So. Yeah, are you? <laughs> Good old werewolves versus vampires. I thought in the, in the they they did some interesting stuff in those uh, Hugh Jackman Hen, Van Helsing movies between. Uh, vampires, werewolves. What did they uh, end up doing? I don't think I've seen those. Uh, oh, they were like a werewolf bite kills vampire or something like that. I don't remember. It's been a long time. Werewolf versus vampires. I think maybe some of these windows at the bottom should be the, like more of the lobby, plate glass type things that we have over here. Yeah. Okay. Um... When you're starting this off, do you usually, um, right, so you started with the pool, but do you usually start with the ground plane? I feel like sometimes uh, it helps, right? With oh, yeah, plane. for sure. Frame this? Let me put a ground plane down, and that could be your, right, it's a blank page. So maybe putting that ground plane down might just help you to start getting uh, stuff on paper, as it were. It just give you a feel for it, you know? Yeah. All right, let's put in, let's put in a second lounging chair. Um, right here. And if we really wanted to, we could like make a little like rooftop deal here, you know, and we're going to do this super fast. Mm -hmm. So fast that the computer is not catching up to it. And then we'll put in a sign <laughs> over it that, um, you know, it's so Mike, I, this is a, uh a question that i already kind of know the answer to but why might you right in this establishing shot it seems like you have the frame just on the pool for now why might you want to draw out this whole establishing shot right why might i want to um for camera work yeah for camera work because um even though we're starting down here i mean we we have so, so much flexibility yeah. in this and let's we can even take it down a little bit if we, if we don't want to have it be as big but um you know we can put some hills and some other buildings and things right here yeah um, you know maybe bit. some palm yeah. trees and you know typical hollywood stuff yeah you know homeless encampment not far from here um <laughs> if you want to be cynical <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so even that's for realism. this is a realism board, even though there's ghosts and spooky characters, it's realism, Hollywood realism. Um, a little, a little slightly overcast. I mean, if we really wanted to, we could, we could do one of those like cool, but banana pants or something like that. We just don't have time for it. Yeah. So, um, let's, let's start our camera. Let's start it up here on the, uh, dead end motel. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we'll put in a camera move. So I'm going to drop a keyframe at the very beginning. Actually, I'm going to scoot that over just a little bit so we have a little bit of time before we pan down, and then we'll put 
uh, drop in right there. So um, if you want to put a, a keyframe just right on the spot, then this middle one's your your guy. Um, these ones here will put keyframe beginning and end if you are, are seeing some of that. So we'll just uh, follow along down here to some of these uh, poolside, these poolside ladies. Um, and we can even widen out to see some of the glittering pool and and some of that good stuff. Let's just get our background out. Yeah. And, uh, zoom back in, and we'll pop in some little uh, bits and like a, a table. A mm -hmm. little, little bit we'll, of detail. We'll put some drinks on the table. Mm -hmm. um, You know, and maybe even they have like a little cabana umbrella or something. Um, it's like I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, since we can, let's just move this um, pool a little bit too. Yeah. We'll move it and make it like kind of like that cross beam shape. Yeah. And classic. make it work with the perspective of the environment a bit better. Mm -hmm. And we're not going to put in some of the other stuff uh, just because we don't have time. All right, now let's put in a, a couple of former uh, starlets, shall we? Let's do it. And we'll draw them in blue. Um, so I know we kind of touched on this a little bit, but um, what are some things to keep in mind when you take a character design to storyboards? So for example, let's just say somebody gave you these Starlet character designs um, and maybe you actually had to design them too. So, right, what would you, what would you have done in preparation for the storyboard? Um, I, I think really what, uh, in a traditional setting, I think what you're looking for is just interpreting a script or just getting yeah. that idea down to, to work with the story, how you feel like it should be uh, you know, dealt with, right? Yeah. So like in this case, since it's, uh, you know, 1940s, we're looking at older style swimsuits. Um, you know, we're looking at the different fashion trends that would have been prevalent in that era, you know, yeah. uh, attitudes. Uh, and that's where research comes in like quite a bit. Um, Absolutely. Doing or be afraid to use references. I know that can be nerve wracking sometimes. You're like, oh, but references, right, are your best friend. That's what I had to discover the hard way. I was like, no, I can, it's from my imagination. It's like, no, just ha pull from a bunch of different things. So, my piece on that. Yeah, and I think, you know, maybe one of them has like one of those, uh, you know, head wraps that still has the hair out the back. Oh yeah, the one that's like, if they're in their car, it's like dropping in the wind. Um, we yeah, have that, that might be a little bit more 50s, you know, but yeah, <laughs> that big curly hair, the sunglasses. Um, right. We do have another question uh, from King and Dev. Yeah. Uh, so they were curious about when you design a character for rigging, is it true you must take your time and draw each part of the body in separate layers? And I think you could probably speak to that having worked in a harmony a bunch. Um, yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, and, and that speaks to, to something, you know, on a larger on a larger scale. I mean, if you want to do quality work, take your time. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, in, unless you're in a super rush, if you're still uh, if you're still learning your craft, I would say that, you know, what what's your hurry? Mm -hmm. You know, get it's like Steve Martin said, before you get an agent, get good. Yeah. Um, and I think that is something that we can all, you know, sort of get behind is that taking your time and making something of a, of a certain quality is going to be worth your while. So having worked in Harmony and right, you, you actively see like, oh, here's all the layers for when I animate. You notice, is there anything you could do to help with like, uh, right, making the animation process easier per se, or just setting it up for success? Um, 
I think sometimes it just, it depends on the workflow. If you're doing like a hero rig and by hero rig, I mean something that people are going to use a lot over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. You want to make that as, as um, you know, all bells and whistles as possible, like with master controllers and harmony uh, yeah. to be able to manipulate the head in different spaces or in different, in different ways. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and then, um, but yeah, if there's a character that only has to serve like a single function, then maybe you can not do all of the things with that and mm -hmm. maybe just keep that into, into a situation where uh, it doesn't have to be perfect, but just has yeah. to be functional. Um, it just all depends on what, what you're going to be doing with it. So um, yeah, but on the whole, I would say just make sure that you put the effort in. It's going to yeah. pay off in the end. No shortcuts. You know. Well, maybe the good shortcuts, but no, no shortcuts. They're going to end up down the line being trouble for everybody else who uses it. So, yeah, because you know, uh, there's so many people that are going to look at your portfolio over time. And there's a lot of people that, you know, and, and I know them, I'm, I'm one of them who can kind of spot when you've not put in your best effort. Mm -hmm. And for people who were hiring, like, you know, I was, just, I just hired uh, some people for a job. Well, uh, not technically me, but made some recommendations. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's, um, uh, at the end of the day, you want to make sure that whoever you're hiring is putting their best foot forward and giving you their best. So Absolutely. this might be a, a good question too, for people who are looking to get into character design when you're looking to refer people or hire people, right? What are some, what are some things you look for in a character design portfolio turnarounds for sure. And maybe how, how many you'd like to see, or um, yeah, if you can speak to that. I think also it's just like, what you can bring to the table as far as and I'm just having a conversation yesterday with uh, a master designer. If any of you are familiar with, with Steven Silver, uh, yeah. he's fantastic. And he's got a new book coming out. So check it out. But um, um, he was talking about, you know, being able to be a, a bit of a chameleon in a way um, and being able to do a bunch of different design styles. But there's yeah. also that whole idea of, you know, what do you bring to the table as a designer that other people haven't brought before? And that's super hard because um, getting down to where you are as an artist, drawing with your soul, you know, and, and not just drawing and regurgitating what you've seen, uh, that's difficult. It's super difficult. Yeah. All right. Let's go um, to, to, the next, to the next thing. But it's worthwhile. It's very, very worthwhile. Yeah, exactly. Um, I find that... Also, some people will, right, in their studies, they'll skip things like, right, the vegetables, like anatomy. They'll skip things like perspective. And those are the things that are also going to help you stand out, you know, because it's, it's the things that some people didn't put in the extra time or maybe uh, to learn because it's hard. Drawing is so hard, especially when it comes to things like anatomy um, and perspective. So... Personally, I get those things. It totally oh, shows. Yeah, I would, I would suggest, especially you know, with right a lot of shows nowadays. If it's like a what superhero show, I mean, there's different styles, but um, those required knowing some like dynamic uh, things, like right the ground planes might be. You might have fisheye lens or something crazy along those lines, and um, it's good to have that in your toolbox. Well, you know, and, and I worked with with various contract studios before, and you can yeah. always tell when you get work back who doesn't understand their fundamentals. Exactly. Um, because you see it, and you're just like, "Why in the world did they do that?" And it's like, <laughs> "Oh, it's because they didn't know any better." Exactly. Yeah, and you know, it, it's easier said than done. I know that uh, there's so there's so much to learn when it comes to drawing um that it can feel a little overwhelming but if you do start and not not specifically go straight to style 
to look for a style, but, but start off by, by practicing those fundamentals, life drawing and what have you. I think that um, you'll be a better character designer for it. I mean, look at, look at Picasso, right? He didn't, he didn't yeah. just discover cubism when he woke up one morning and just like, yeah, I'm going to do it. Like if you see some of Picasso's older works, there is a solid understanding of yeah. all the traditional art skills. The dude just got bored. <laughs> it's like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to do something else. And, and he did. And now his, his works are selling for, you know, however, umpteen like a, million dollars or whatever. Um, <laughs> But that's the thing. He he took the time and and, and learned his fundamentals, mm -hmm. and you know went with that. And um, you you can't break rules you don't know. Exactly. Um. So we have another question from King and Dev. Uh. So for storyboards, would you recommend that you draw the background and the character design in a separate layer? Um. Yes. Uh, <laughs> do you do it all in the same layer? I know when you're right. When you're when you're speeding through stuff, I, I feel like sometimes you might end up trying the same layer. But Mike, what would you suggest? Probably doing things on separate layers. Yeah. I mean, for thumbnail passes, no. For for production mm -hmm. work, absolutely. And you have to mm -hmm. make sure that your layering is good too. Absolutely. And what's nice about Storyboard Pro too is you can have so many layers it's like why not use them i mean you don't want it to be crowded but that's the beauty of using digital is that you could have those in separate layers and say if somebody comes back to you and wants changes you can change it uh, a lot faster yeah that way. for instance i'm gonna make a change right now actually Ooh. because i i think i like this ghost lady in this position but i'm not totally sold on the mm -hmm. other one right so um I'm going to change the perspective of this, of this a little bit. Yeah. Grab this one here, grab this here. And you know, and we're doing this off the fly on the fly, so it, it can get a little bit more uh, dicey with some of the stuff that we're doing, but um, you know, it's fairly easy just to change that perspective a little bit and move yeah. on. You know, and then we'll put in uh, that cabana umbrella right there and she's see-through so um, <laughs> that's not as big of an issue because i want to i want to give this ghost here a little bit more of a spotlight because she is speaking but you know generally when we thumbnail it out i would do something like this and have them you know be talking yeah right so when, when you're just doing it yeah. on like this, it makes it a little bit more difficult to do it on the fly, but you know, we can do it. So let's do it. She's going to look a little bit big and bug eyed at the moment. She kind of looks like, like a weird Spider-Man. Maybe one of those ones from some <laughs> somewhere. Love that. We got a ton of those in Hollywood. So <laughs> that's not too far off um, for thumbnail. Yeah. Oh, they're all over the walk of fame. Oh, for sure. But, uh, I haven't been down the there in a while. Yeah, you got all the superheroes. You got the Avengers too. <laughs> yeah. Each side of the got their own. Just remember, kids, they're not sponsored by anyone. They just do this for tips. <laughs> exactly. So you never know what you're gonna get. Let's put some old some old drinks right there, and you know we could even put some like cobwebs on it, like they haven't actually drank those in like a year, and, and, and you know centuries or decades or whatever decades because they're not that old the ghost cups Ooh. um for thumbnails uh generally how long do you take on those it was supposed to be really quick right you just something that you yeah. like on. i try not to i try not to take very long on them yeah. um what you saw with the thumbnail just now is generally how mm -hmm. long i like to take <laughs> <laughs> But it just depends on the shot, right? Sometimes it, there's a little bit more mental work involved, um, and you just have to kind of go go with that. Love how these characters are turning out; they're so cute. Thanks. You no, know, I, I I try to do my piece for character design, but I can't yeah. say I'm the best designer ever. 
these uh tend to feel a little like uh you know Bruce Timish. <laughs> yeah. So I'm haunting this couple and I just, I just don't feel scary enough. <laughs> and they don't even notice me. I mean, I'm wearing my Jimmy shoes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> This is a great idea. Whoever came up with the haunted pool site, thank you. This is fun. Yeah. And the and the ghosts uh, making faces too. That was pretty pretty clever. I think the one of the great things I love about the collaboratory is how, um, I guess it's in the name, right? The collaboratory. We're we're putting something together with several different minds. It's almost like having a remote story team, just like right here, and uh, all working together on something. I think that's really fun. Exactly. Sort of highlights how. You know, while too many cooks in the kitchen is uh, is a lot, sometimes <laughs> you just need that whole team, right? Exactly. Yeah. Animation is, I feel like, a super collaborative. And when, you, when you're in college and you're just working on your thesis film, I think in most cases you're still working with different people. So For animation sure. is super collaborative. Yeah. That, that actually is a good point too, Mike. Like maybe you can speak to this about how important it might be to build right, a network in animation for both character design and story. Oh, design. oh yeah. And a, a good network is invaluable mm -hmm. and for several different reasons. Uh, one of the two, one of the, the biggest reasons that I can think of is to have, to have an awesome network. is just the fact that those are the people that are going to help you get work. Yeah. You know, um, because somebody's going to hear about something or somebody's on a show and they're going to be like, hey, we need X, Y, Z for people. Um, what are you doing right now? And then you'll say, well, uh, I'm sitting here playing Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. How about you? <laughs> oh, uh, you should come down and, and, and come work with us, man. And uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, come you know, on. I'm on my way. Let's have lunch. So a network is absolutely invaluable. Yeah. I mean, right, life is up here, so um, it can be a whole lot of that. Let's play it back. So let's do a little bit a little bit of acting on, on oh, we need names for these two. Let's have names. Who, who wants to come up with some names for these two ladies? Names. Does anybody have any names? I could throw out a few, like, just, like, out there, Ethel, Helen, um, something like um, Pearl, um, if anybody else has better ideas. Um, you can literally have someone just named Monroe, just because that sounds like an old classic Hollywood name. Um, oh, what about ghost puns, like ghost puns? Um, uh, or something like... Um, yeah, I'm all out of creative pun juice, but... Something along those lines would be great. Uh, that sounds like something that you could market. Creative pun juice. Yeah. It comes from from the pun plant in uh, <laughs> you know, South Indonesia, where the home of puns. Exactly. Is so she's clearly frustrated i haunt and i haunt and i haunt and it does no good <laughs> why can't people understand i love scaring <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly i'm just no good it's always no. it's always like that <laughs> that starlet from like jersey or whatever yeah you know, that, with that uh, weird uh, Harley Quinn, you know, uh, Eastern accent, 
Exactly. I think it's just uh, fun to do the voice. Not quite that like mid Atlantic thing, but uh, you know, that mid Atlantic accent is wild so yeah. fast. Um, appreciates true talent. Oh, the nerve. You just don't get me. You just don't get me. So then we can uh, we can take this one. I'm going to duplicate it. But I am going to separate that into a new scene. And mm -hmm. uh, what I'm going to do here is just take my camera. And we're just going to do a cut in right here. On. Phantasma. Uh, Sorry. That's, that's too long. <laughs> it just popped into Phantasma. my head. Oh, I don't know. I, I... Phasma? Phasma? What? Oh, that's already a Star Wars thing. Is it? Uh-oh. <laughs> Captain Phasma? Yeah. Uh -oh. In my in my opinion, a wasted character. Oh. Another one, one in a long list of wasted characters in Star Wars. Yeah. Hmm. I'll keep at it. I'll keep at it. No noggin here. Okay, well let's let's uh let's see what our our um our audience has to say. Absolutely. All right, and and she's just gonna look at her, and we'll have a built-in hookup to that to that Ooh. scene. I'm gonna turn on my light box really quick here. Um, and go to a. And she's just going to be that you know relaxed, effortless friend. You know, there's, there's there's just certain people that almost everything they do, it just seems so effortless, but yet so well done. Yeah. And those are the kind of people that you're just like, dang you. <laughs> the one friend you can call and they'll actually give you real talk or real advice. And you're like, oh, man, I wanted delusions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, sorry, girl, I've just got the real for you. And you're like, wow. <gasps> I, I feel like all of these should be voiced by Kelly Ruman. <laughs> Absolutely. Kelly, Kelly Ruman is, a, is an excellent uh, voice artist that uh, we work with and um has has done ghost duos in the past that i just found pretty hilarious and he's like what i see her from time to time appear on like my instagram feed and i'm like whoa this is so wild because i was like i've seen kelly on zoom you know for the show and i was like oh my gosh this is crazy yeah well internet yeah. celebrity Let's just have her uh, take a drink of something that just mm -hmm. like some froofy drink that just spills right through. <laughs> I love that. She's just like, whatever. It's no big deal. <laughs> show <clears throat> well i don't know what to tell you sip <laughs> i told you you should have taken those acting classes <laughs> so yeah. I, I feel like it's one of those moments where like somebody would uh you know kind of come out of their haughty thing for a minute and yeah. just be real. You know, like turn the whole body in the situation. Yeah. I'm not totally excited about that pose yet. So this is where a good gesture drawing comes into play for those of you who are, you know, aspiring board artists. I think that, um, you and know, care. being able to have those good you know, gestures and, and such. Mike, do you have any recommendations for like resources for, you know, gesture, storyboarding, um, 
things that people either can do to practice or just resources to study, kind of like. Uh, the Walt, Walt Stanchfield books. Yeah. Uh, check those out. The Walt Stanchfield <laughs> books are really great. Um, they're uh, what some of the, the old masters uh, trained on. No, I'm liking this pose a lot better too. Clarity. That eye line <laughs> is uh, not, not great. Eye line. So she's going to lean forward, you know, very friendly, in a very friendly way. Um, you know, I think one thing that we can do too, just to establish a little bit more character, is just after this, she's just going to chuck the drink. <laughs> It just floats away. It's a ghost cup. We don't have to put a, a ton of effort into that. Now, let's focus on this. <laughs> Mm. So she'd be putting all of her weight on the one. Also, being able to to do a little, at least a little bit of of hand drawn animation is going to help you quite a bit. Yeah. Because yeah, we're we're having her lean forward like this, and then we can even put her down farther and closer. Seeing where those hands were. It helps add a little bit more character. Yeah. With a little bit of uh, so individuality. She's not a heartless person. She's Yeah. She's got movement. She's got form. She's moving. All right. I'm going to help you. Let's see what you got. <laughs> and then I think we need a new shot here. Yeah. Of, uh, and over the shoulder, probably. Let's do this. We got the friend here, and uh, let's put those on the right layers. Let's put on B and keep it consistent. We got our, our our front layer here on the top, and then we got our A layer, and she'll just be right here with, with her, you know, thing. And she's got her all slumped. I'm so bummed. So I don't know what to do with my life, my afterlife. <laughs> and this is one of those like, really, you'll help me sort of situations. Yeah. We can keep the knees where they are. You know, I keep I keep thinking in my mind a little bit about you know, um, not skipping steps uh, when you're doing this sort of stuff. That's been kind of in my my mind here as I am skipping steps, I guess. But <laughs> uh, I think it's when, uh, well, I, I don't know. What well, kind of lost my train of thought there? I, I have to admit. Um, so, I was. Oh, I remember. I was going to say sometimes it's just not really that difficult to just get into the habit of of doing things. Like for instance, in in this situation, um, you know, I'm just I've done it so many times. It's like automatic at this point, where yeah. uh, I'm just putting things on layers as I come across them, and just setting up a scene um, in the way that it should be from the start, knowing what's going to be in the front, what's going to be in the middle, what's going to be in the back and putting those on the appropriate layers. 
just from the outset when you're setting up a shot. Um, and I think once that you sort of get into that mode and that grain, then you just keep going with it. And uh, it becomes like a second nature and a habit. And at which point you don't have to worry about it so much anymore because you're just doing it naturally. Yeah. So I feel like with both character design and storyboarding, one of the things right across animation is that things change a lot. So oh, when you're sure. doing storyboards, Mike, you could probably speak to this too. Um, how often do things change? And right, should you be should you spend too much time on one single panel? Things are going to change all the time, and there's no <laughs> way you can stop it. It's inevitable. It, you know, the old saying is boarding is reboarding, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and so I, I, there's, there's no, no real way around it. You yeah. know, things are going to change. Opinions are going to change. Stuff is going to change. And that's why a lot of the time I think the best board artists are those that have a little bit thicker of a skin that aren't super precious with drawings. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. As a designer, do you are you pre more precious with a drawing than you would be as a board artist? From what I can tell, um, right, the story or like the character designs I've worked on, it hasn't necessarily changed a lot. Most of the time, they have an idea of what they want, but I find that across the board with other character designers, things change a lot, just like storyboards. So I have a friend that works at Netflix, and they like change the main character all the time and so you're constantly you might get more time per se to work on one particular character as opposed to right in in this storyboard right here we have numerous characters going around we have backgrounds and what have you uh whereas a character designer might spend a week to three weeks just designing our character we're looking at right here so um it all depends too you can, that, you can, that, that sounds can, luxurious to me. <laughs> Three weeks. Uh, now, now, hold it. It might be a shorter turnaround. Um, and I'm, I'm sure maybe, I don't know if you've worked in both feature and TV. I've only done mostly like, from what I've heard of TV stuff, but um, it's a shorter turnaround, I've heard at least, for TV uh, when compared to feature. So. TV is always going to be a shorter turnaround. That's just the yeah. nature of the beast. Um. Um, then we have a question that's asking uh, from Empress uh, Mega VR. They're just asking what so software you're using or you're drawing on. Storyboard Pro, my friend. Storyboard Pro. <laughs> you know, and 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 we'll we'll put in a little a little plug for you right here. Uh, if you want to try it out and haven't, there's a 21 day trial you can pick up on ToonBoom.com. Mm -hmm. Fully featured too. Fully featured. 21 day trial. You, there's not. They're not going to nerf you with saves. They're not going to, you know, say it's all watermarked. You can use it free for, um, for three weeks. Yeah. So and if I you've think got a project that you want to do, and uh, it, you've got a burning passion to do it, then you've got three weeks to accomplish it, and then um, after that, you can just get a subscription. And it's one of those things that's like, you know the tools of the trade situation, right? Yeah. You're with, with whatever profession that you enter, there's going to be an equipment requirement, right? I mean, you wouldn't want somebody, uh, you know, welding up stuff on a bridge without a welding, <laughs> welding equipment, right? Yeah. The artist, same way. You've got your tablets, you've got your, uh, software and, um, you know, those are investments that you make in your career. Exactly. I, I think for if, if you're a student, there is also a discount for Storyboard Pro. Um, and if you're in animation, Harmony as well. So, um, yeah, yeah. I recommend that. So, Michael, just, really? 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 Yeah. <laughs> okay, and she's like, okay, 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 okay. All right. 
Get it together. Get it together. Yeah, let me just do a new drawing of her. She just steals steals herself up. Mike, do you know what sort of uh, programs are pretty much um, what most character designers use uh, as industry standards? Uh, Storyboard. Sure. I, I really couldn't say. Yeah. I, I think from what I can tell, um, a lot of- Photoshop, maybe? Photoshop, yeah, yeah, I was about to say, a lot of people use Photoshop. Some people will, will do like Procreate and then um, I think export as a Photoshop file. Um, yeah. Oh, uh, what what sort of files do you see for um, Harmony that are kind of imported, or do you do do people ever do direct um, character designing in Harmony for shows that use those rigs? You know what? They really should. <laughs> and, and and I'll tell you why. I, I really feel like that um, there's just so much malleability in in the vector system that's here in Storyboard Pro and Harmony. And not only that, but you'd have built-in vectors when you clean up just to go straight into rigging with. So, like, yeah. I, I, I feel like people waste a lot of time in other software when they don't need to. Um, yeah. And uh, it just seems like an inefficient waste to me. Yeah, cut out some of the middlemen. She's like, okay, okay, okay. All right. Hear me out. And now, scary face. Here's another trick that's kind of fun too. If if you if you if you um, are needing reference from, you can just turn on the onion skin. But um, the biggest trick to that is here is what's called the top light, and that's the thing you can add into your customization uh, thing. But you can turn up your opacity so if it's not enough you need a little bit more you can just turn up that light <clears throat> this uh top light and have have that <laughs> this is turned out great. have her do this generally when we're working in in animation especially in tv programming we want to make sure that we're not you know doing weird spread leg crocs crotch mm -hmm. shots um as and as, as awkward as that may sound you notes know will get uh done on that yeah so, so, so you know that's still a thing <laughs> Well, there's right stuff like style guides, and that that makes that makes a lot of sense. So down the line, they don't have I to. Think, hey, I think it's aesthetically, it's just not as, uh -huh. as good either. I mean, not yeah. to be gross or anything, but it's just just not as aesthetic, you know, as aesthetically uh, competent. Yeah. All right. Here's another little trick that I like to do sometimes. If I, if I need to put in a little bit of motion, say I've got my base uh, my base look, mm -hmm. right? 
I can just move a couple things here and there and use some animation tricks yeah. to uh, do like subtle head turn stuff, just elongating a couple of things, flopping a couple of things, moving it around a little bit here and there. I can, I can flop that mouth, right? So she's doing like a boogie boogie. Yeah. <laughs> that's great so she's got like a little bit of a thing you know obviously that would probably need to be smoothed out a little bit and just yeah. move a couple of things here and there but for something uh, real quick that looks but it was very 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 very, very quick and let's yeah. give her some uh some crazy looking teeth and a tongue mm -hmm. that's all weird too and Gets the idea across without it being, you know, very heavy handed. Yeah. Um, that spiky thing in the front there. Ah! And then uh, after that, so she goes, ah. And uh, we can. In I'm going to zoom out on the storyboard real quick so we can see that, mm -hmm. so that extra panel and just copy and paste the panel a few times. Wow. Let's get a new panel and then we'll go to the friend who was on, on this side. We're going to do a single. Mm -hmm. Of her. And she's got that more of that halter the costuming. It's a little bit of the more Jessica Rabbit. Mm -hmm. She is not impressed, obviously. <laughs> I've seen scarier. <laughs> A little bit of a sigh. Then we'll just go back to this first drawing here. Copy, paste that. for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like becomes like an impromptu acting class. Uh, okay. So, you're not really giving it any real subtext. Yeah. Did you ever take any acting classes? Uh, uh, here and there. But, um, you know, I, I, we had a, a, an acting class that we took at, at, in college at Cal yeah. And, um, I have to say, you know, they had us do all those improv type exercises. And uh, I had one friend that made one of the most convincing ducks I've ever seen. <gasps> like as in the, the, the quack duck? Or are we talking I like a... He embodied a duck. 
<laughs> like nobody I've ever seen. Like what? Like he got down uh, low to the floor and like somehow waddled. And it was incredible. That's so good. Uh, I took an improv class for a little bit. And uh, I think I think improv could be a good skill to have as an animator. I oh, feel for sure. like lots of um, lots of the documentaries you see where you're seeing animators, they're like looking in a mirror and they're going like, ah, and they're making those faces. And you're always like, wow, like that's, that's so cool that like behind the scenes, um, acting that goes goes on to like uh, animating the character so um, well you know I, I i think you know that's the difference between a technician and an animator um, yeah because you know we we have this idea when we first start out that oh we're gonna, we're gonna make pretty drawings or something like that right and that's yeah. gonna be our job but like no no first and foremost working this you are an entertainer that's yeah. what you do that's what your job is is to entertain in some way, shape, or form. And the form that you're choosing is drawings. So yeah. if you're working on a comedy, you have to, you know, be an, an entertaining comedian in, in some way, shape, or form. There's yeah. just, you can't avoid it. You know, it, it's again, going back to that, that idea of putting the work in and not trying to take shortcuts. Yeah. You know? uh, we do have another question from Rohit. Okay, great. Uh, can Toon Boom be integrated easily with After Effects, or is post-production easy in Toon Boom? Uh, yes and yes. <laughs> um, and, and I'll elaborate on that. The, uh, Toon, you know, Harmony has a very robust compositing system. So you yeah. can use Harmony right out of the box and be fine. There's a lot, and there's, there's new nodes, and there's a scripting language that you can use to write your own nodes if you are thus capable. Yeah. Um, But like that being said, it also you can put things in After Effects too. Um, I've, I've you know I've worked on shows where some people will import the raw drawings or the raw staging and do some of their camera work in After Effects or you mm -hmm. know different things. There's so many different pipelines that you can do, uh, and you know with some of the export features, you can export right into a nonlinear editor. Mm -hmm and be fine like for server pro here you can you can export like videos right into a nonlinear editor yeah hopefully and hopefully uh the working on an image to export you know to populate a, a nonlinear editor too that would be gold yeah okay let's see so it's like ah all right so let's start with the basics <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. There's some great acting here. So you like... Do you have any tips, Mike, for, for, for acting, doing character acting through your characters and getting maybe better at it or just making convincing acting? Um, I think just practice. Yeah. I, I think it's, you know, you try to try and embody a character as much as possible. Mm-hmm. And uh, and really make make those performances shine as, as much as you can. And and you know, learning acting, looking at the way different people do their acting, you know, um, I think is is a really helpful skill. Like, you know, how does uh, let's see, uh, like for instance, what's the difference between Jodie Foster and Scarlett Johansson in the way they act? What's the yeah. difference between uh robin williams and uh i don't know for let's see robin williams and will smith like what are the what are their differences in acting like what are the styles like if if you look at like say men in black going back to the will smith this is will smith example you've got two very different actors in tommy lee jones and uh and will smith and how do each each one of those uh you know, do their roles. Yeah. And again, how do you, how do you interpret things like as an actor yourself? Like you're, you're just acting with your pencil or with your stylus and not on a camera. Right. 
Yeah. So how do you approach your things? How do you act? How do you feel like you could act? So many uh, videos have been coming out lately about actors or, I mean, animators that had uh, done their own reference. Oh, those are great. I love seeing and, those. Yeah. And, and you see like kind of the thought process behind it and then how they sort of refined it in their, in their animation and brought in a, an extra element of life that they, that they didn't quite get from, um, they didn't quite get in their performance. You know, they just add that other motion element that makes it an animated performance in a, in a little bit more of a, of a lively way. Yeah. Because, I think you know, also interesting to see those behind the scene videos where you're like, oh, the voice actors say Robin Williams did write the genie. And then you notice that like, you're like wait a second, the genie kind of has some a Robin Williams mannerisms. So I don't yeah. know, that's, this stuff is, is super cool. How animators just have the ability to like translate that into a character. And that's the genius of Eric Goldberg right there. Yeah. <laughs> if uh, any of you know, oh yeah, it's right. You guys share a surname. I forgot. We do. Not related. Have, have you met Eric? I um I didn't meet him, but I got to see him at I want to say CTN, way way yeah. back. Yeah. Eric is an amazing person and a very nice man. I believe it. He, he's I, I have a very very high opinion of Mr. Goldberg. Did you uh have you worked with Eric before? Uh, as a, as an apprentice, yes. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> so and then she said, uh, so here we go. We have like, uh, okay, starting with the basics. I like to give him a little bit of a, maybe one more, one more pose in here. We're all, we run out of time. We don't have time for poses. I like to give him <laughs> maybe a little bit of a, a demure look. And then even even sometimes we can add just a little bit of something and make it, you know, without too much effort. Yeah. Just and that gives it just enough something. Yeah. Given just a little bit of look. So they're not expecting, and then we'll take that and turn on, turn on this. Love the squash and stretch in her face. Thank you. Mike, did you start in storyboards by chance or did you also do a little bit of animation in the beginning? I, I started in animation and then made the switch to storyboards. It shows. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> And then let's get a, a camera move in here as uh, she throws a real scary face forward. Maybe we won't even do pupils or something. I don't know. Just keep them as eye whites. Ooh. I still haven't thought of names for these two gals. If anybody has any suggestions, let us know. And I'll keep thinking of some too.
give her like crazy hair. <gasps> what about one of them could be Polly? Polly? Yeah. Like Polly guys, like Polter guys. <laughs> oh, Susie and Sue, uh, Charlotte, Charlotte the cat, suggest. <laughs> what? What was that? Oh, so we had a, another suggestion for the name, you, Susie and Sue. Oh, I thought you said Charlotte. <laughs> Susie and Charlotte. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Charlotte the cat was giving a recommendation for for names, and uh, they were saying like Susie and Sue could be good. My my idea was something like Polygeist, but it's it's kind of like does it roll off the tongue? But let's let's take this down and we'll stretch it out a bit more, like Banshee style. Yeah. And have like <laughs> that's great. Her tongue all weird and crazy, and her hair like everywhere. And, you know, goop dripping off one side. Like maybe yeah. she, maybe she uh, was in a fire or something like that, and so half her face and life got burned off. That's why she wears her hair the way she does yeah so and that's that's one thing that you know when you're boarding and when you're animating and when you're doing all these things that's something that you should think about is like mm -hmm. you know and, and again it goes back to that that idea of subtext right of where does your character from what do they how do they think and what are they thinking right now exactly and, and even when you're designing characters too this is all great stuff for when you're going to design. Yeah, so like when you go in on a design, say you have a certain, you know, you have a, a I don't know if you get a briefing or, or I think you probably get a briefing, right? They tell you like, oh, this is the character and this is where they fit in the story. Yeah, generally they have an idea of, of what they're going for or the general story. Maybe the script is still being rewritten because everything, storyboards, character design is always changing, so. Oh, for sure. Uh, we probably have an idea of like, oh, this is the character. You could have a lot of freedom or you could have like, we, this is what we really specifically want. Um, okay. And then we're going to, we're going to reuse a shot here. Um, I'm just going to grab this shot here. I'm going to copy it and I'm going to paste it. Boom. So it sounds like we are running out of time. Um, okay. Mike, would you mind uh, when, when you're ready, of course, to play the animatic for our audience? Yes. Give me a, just a second. I got to wrap up a couple things. So zoom out. We see that. And then this was the wrong drawing. Let's go back and turn this off. Let's do this one. So we need We need facial elements from that. And then she can just be up here. And we'll no, we should flip her around, but uh, she can be not crying, but like impressed. She's like, oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, and clapping oh. like you know, her hands are, are clapping like, oh my gosh, that was so great, you know, like that. Oh, that's that's amazing. And uh, we'll we'll copy that really quick, and uh, let's on the top layer, we'll do like all the crazy hair and everything. Of course, we we can't uh, cover the other person too much, mm -hmm. but she's like ah. And then, oh my gosh, it was so good. <laughs> you know, closed eyes, just going back like that. And then I'm going to copy that one more time. And we're going to do just a quick camera move. We'll do 
um, a reveal. <laughs> <laughs> And we'll have in the background uh, the pool. All right, so there's the pool. And we're going to put, I'm going to take this layer C and drop it back here because I just had the idea just a minute ago of having <laughs> That's awesome. The pool guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, oh my God. <laughs> uh, let's not give him a mustache. He, doesn't, he shouldn't have a mustache. You know? <laughs> <laughs> And we should have more camera moves there. So we have this, and then I'm going to copy that. And he's just going to be like, you know, yeah. Yeah. I'm out of here. <laughs> this lady is crazy. Uh, he just falls back, like, uh, falls back. Whoa. Then, of course, we just need an extra little splash. And that's done. Uh, and we just need one more little thing here. Copy that. Erase that mouth. If we had time, we'd make it look prettier. Take away the multiples. Speed running storyboarding. <laughs> Okay, let's go through it from the start. All right. Yeah. Here we go. So we start at the Dead End Hotel. And we pan down to two ghosts enjoying a leisurely uh, evening. It just seems like no matter what I do, it doesn't matter. No one's ever scared of me. Oh, what am I going to do? I'm, I'm, I'm so bad at this anymore. <laughs> she just says, like, uh, well, go, go. Go, 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 go. Let's see what you got. Really? Really? You're going to help me? Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> let me show you. Like, uh, I should, like, she would say here, like, let me show, let's see what you got. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> Then she looks at her and goes, oh, okay, first of all, where's your subtext? You know, I, sometimes I like to just do a little bit of a, a, a sultry nod and then <laughs> terrifying everywhere. <laughs> and then she, she claps and claps. Oh, my gosh, that was so good. I loved it. And then we see we pan over to the pool guy. <laughs> <laughs> And then she claps again and she's like, oh, it looks like we're going to have company soon. <laughs> That's great. Oh, my gosh. Cool. All right. Awesome. Well, Mike, thank you for joining us again for a collaboratory. Do you have any projects or topics you would like to draw our attention to? Well, um, as you can see behind me here, Toon Boom is going to be at Lightbox Expo coming up in Pasadena on uh, the weekend before Halloween. So I believe it's the 27th through the 29th. Mm -hmm. So if you are at Lightbox, uh, come to the booth. Come check us out. Come see us. Yeah. Uh, and if you happen to come across somebody named Janelle, 
Janelle is the producer of the Collaboratory, and so you can ask her all your questions about Collaboratory and Toon Boom, and she'll be happy to answer all of those questions. I think that you should probably ask her more questions than you need to. <laughs> Awesome. Thank you to everyone who joined us for Collaboratory. Um, and if Mike could draw this a beautiful storyboard in an hour, think about what you could draw in three weeks. So you can download a 21 day trial of Storyboard Pro from our website, tuneboom.com, and find free video tutorials at learn.tuneboom.com. And if you are looking for more interviews, be sure to visit blog.tuneboom.com for articles about storyboarding, animation, and 2D games. Until next time. <laughs> See you guys. Bye.